And he starts to talk about how you engage with people who want to harm you. How you engage with people who persecute you. How you engage with people who don't have your best interest in mind. Essentially, how you love your enemies. And he says, the most extreme version of this is what you do when you're wrong. When somebody comes after you, what does it look like to sacrifice something for them? Because when you are wronged, there are two ways that you can respond. Either you can take matters into your own hands, you can enact justice on your terms, and you can say, I am going to make things right how I think they should be. And you take what we call revenge. And I would say that our culture, like, loves revenge, right? Like, we get all fired up about a good revenge story, right? And I don't know if any people are honest enough to say, like, there are times I fantasize about revenge. Like, you give me the right situation, the right context, and I will let that. Do you know what I would say to them, what I would do to them, how I would make them pay for what they've done to me? I get this weekly, like, Netflix email that says, hey, here's what's on Netflix. Here's what you should watch. This week, the top movie was a movie titled Do Revenge. It's about, like, these high school kids getting back at each other. I don't know what it was about. But our culture is fascinated with revenge because we think we're the masters of our own destiny. We're the ones who should enact justice, and I know what's best, and I'm going to settle the score. So one way, when you are wronged, that you could respond is by taking matters into your own hand. But Paul is offering something different. He's, he's inviting us to resist revenge and to place things in God's hands. To, to leave room for God to enact justice in the world. Which that's a whole lot harder to do. Because it means I have to let go of control. Control. 